Um, recording. Um, I'm your MCA, so I'm the one who processes all the checks, uh, manage the financials of the market centers. Um, I also um, do a lot with operations in the market centers as well. So I'm a great person to ask if you have a question. If you're looking for trying to track down a commission check or um, anything of that nature or have a question about an office bill, um, I'm the person to come to. So does anyone have any questions before we get started? I'm assuming that there's going to be a lot of things in this meeting that assume that I've already dipped into command, which I have not yet, but I think this will help me to understand things better as I start playing around in that system. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll definitely show you from beginning to end how to submit that commission request in command. Um, so that's what today is all about is really once you get that client under contract and you know that a closing is going to happen and it's time for you to get paid, uh, what process um, do you have with the market center in order to make that happen? And what is the timeline like? Um, and then we'll answer some specific questions as well too about different scenarios. Um, so that's going to be the format for today that we'll go over. I'm going to share my screen with you all so you can take a look. Let's minimize this first. Um, has anyone here made a commission request before or is everyone new to that? This will be new to me. Okay. All right, share screen. Just Sorry. You're gonna see yourselves on here. All righty, can every, everyone see my screen moving around? Yep. Okay, perfect. So, um, and if you guys have a question, feel free to interrupt me. I can't, I may have to minimize Zoom throughout this. So um, please, I wanna make sure I get all your questions answered and I won't be offended if you stop me. So please stop me if you have a question or if I'm going too fast, I wanna make sure I answer everything. Um, okay, so this graphic here shows the timeline of how to get paid. And uh, made it too small, let me go back. There we go, that's better. So the first step um, that you're gonna take when you get something under contract is you're gonna create an opportunity in command. And that's something that I'll show you how to do. First, we're gonna walk through the process and then I'll show you how to do all this. Um, so opportunities in command, you should have one for every single transaction that you have. So every single buyer that you have, every single seller that you have, um, you should have an opportunity. If you have someone that you are selling their home and also helping them buy, um, they should have two separate opportunities for each of those transactions. So just make sure for every deal that you do or every deal that you think you're going to do, you create a new opportunity for that. Um, opportunities are a great way to start tracking your numbers. So we all know in real estate that numbers and knowing our numbers are incredibly important so that we can help understand our businesses. Um, when you create an opportunity, you can put a lot of different dates in there. So you can put a date that you set an appointment, you can put a date that you got a contract signed, and all of those dates that you add to those opportunities will help, will give you the statistics that you need to help understand your business more. So command tracks all of your appointments for you and all of your buyers and sellers for you. But in order to make that tracking happen, you have to take the step to create that opportunity. So definitely would recommend creating an opportunity as soon as you even schedule an appointment with someone because putting that date there of that scheduled appointment will help you track your statistics. Eventually you'll be able to track what's your ratio of appointments set to appointments accepted to contract signed. So that's why it's important to create that opportunity as early on in your process as possible. Um, in terms of getting paid, if you say you chose not to create that opportunity early on, um, the, the point in terms of the market center to create that opportunity is as soon as you have a buyer or listing agreement. So as soon as that is signed, get started on uploading those documents to that opportunity. That way, as you get new contracts signed throughout the entire process, you can upload them as you go. 
Um, instead of just uploading it in one big bulk, you can do it as you go. It's a great way to track your contracts. It's a great way to add a quick glance, know what you have signed and what you still need. Um, so definitely would recommend creating that opportunity and uploading those buyer listing agreements as soon as you have them. Um, I will say to, does anyone here have a transaction coordinator? Not yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have one as soon as I've done one or two myself so I can make sure I hold them accountable for doing their job right, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely something that I would recommend is doing one or two on your own so that you know the process. And once you get to the point where you have a transaction coordinator, they can do these things for you so they can upload the documents um, as you go so that when it comes time to submit that commission request, it's all handled by the transaction coordinator. So um, that's something to keep top of mind. If you are at the point where you're ready to, to sign up with a transaction coordinator, we can get you some recommendations on that. So just feel free to reach out to myself. You can reach out to Amy um, and we can get you in touch with someone really good who can help you out with that. Because um, we all know that in terms of selling real estate, the most important part is getting our new clients and then taking them through that process. And the TCs can really, really help take that off your plate so that you can spend your time uh, getting more business. So um, that's create an opportunity and I will walk you through how to do that. Um, once you have a fully executed purchase agreement, so the, the buyers and the sellers have agreed, you have a deal done, um, is at the point when I would say you can start commit submitting the commission request. Um, some people wait until after the inspection period and that's more than okay to submit that commission request because the inspection period is often when, you know, purchase price might change or the closing date might change. Um, so I would personally wait until after that inspection happens and you can create that submit the commission request as soon as you are under contract with your buyers or sellers. Does anyone have questions about that? Okay. And the other thing I would say is, say you don't submit it right after inspection, please just make sure that you submit that commission request at least three days prior to closing um, because there's a little bit of a turnaround time and you'll discover that as we go through this timeline but we wanna make sure that we have time to send you the, the, it's called a disbursement authorization and that you have time to look it over and make sure that everything's correct. So that's why at the very latest, please submit it at least three days prior to closing. Um, and the, most of the TCs do that really well. So once you have a TC, that's one of those things that, that they can do and that you won't have to worry about. Um, Throughout the process, if something does happen where the purchase price changes or the closing date changes, that often means that you're going to need that something with the commission is going to change. So if that's the case, just shoot me an email and I can update that disbursement authorization for you. Um, the disbursement authorization, and I'll show you exactly what one looks like. That's actually what tells the title company um, how to pay you. So in our state, it's awesome. The title companies can actually pay you on the day of closing at the, at the closing table. And the way that we do that, the way the title company does that is by that disbursement authorization. Um, what the law is, is that when you receive a commission check, it actually has to go through the brokerage. So you can't receive one directly to your name. It has to go through the brokerage. And what that disbursement authorization does is it tells the title company, okay, you can cut our check, but you can cut theirs directly to them. So instead of having to bring the full check to me and have me cut the check back to you, this disbursement authorization allows you to get paid at the table. So it's a little more work on the front end in terms of you're gonna have to submit a commission request, but in the end, you get paid quicker than a lot of other states do because you have that ability to get paid at the table. So um, email updates to me anytime there's a change. Uh, the next step is to submit the file for approval. So a uh, big thing here is we do not give you disbursement authorization. So we don't allow you to get paid at the table unless you have a fully approved file. And what I mean by that 
is when you upload documents to command, there are certain documents that the market center requires um, that we need to keep on file for several years. So I'm sure you all learned that in real estate school, <laughs> but those we need to have those full and complete files so that if there are any questions or anything like that, the market center has everything on hand. So that's incredibly important to make sure all of your documents are uploaded and that compliance has a chance to approve them. Um, at our market center, Donna, who is our broker, she also does our compliance. So she's gonna take a look at all of your files. She's gonna make sure everything looks good, that everything is in there, that every document has a signature on it. And then she's gonna mark your file approved. And that tells me that you're good to go and that we're ready for you to close, that we are ready to give you that disbursement authorization. So it's important that you take the time to submit that file for approval. If you have a TC, again, that's something that they will do for you. They'll make sure that everything's uploaded and they'll make sure that it's approved. Um, however, if you're doing it on your own, that's something that you will do. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Any questions on submitting the file for approval or the timeline so far? One question I have is when it says submit all your documents, that by that you're, I don't know what all my documents are gonna be at this point, but I'm sure that'll become clear with time. Uh, but I'm assuming like for me, it starts off with my uh, uh, agency agreement that I'm trying to sign tomorrow, right? Put that in the file. And that way, when I bring the file over to you, all that stuff is in there. Yes, absolutely. So the awesome thing about command is it will show you line by line exactly what documents that you need to have uploaded. So it's actually a really nice guide, especially if you're new and not quite sure what things you need to have signed. It will show you exactly, and I'll go in there and show you as well. It will show you exactly what which documents that you need. It'll show you which documents that you sometimes might need based on different situations. So if a house is a well, you may need a document that has to do with a well. <laughs> so command will show you all those potential documents that you could need and then all the ones that are always required. So that's gonna be in there for you, which is great. And you, I would definitely recommend using that as a guide as you move forward. Um, so the next step is once your file is fully approved, I will send you a signed disbursement authorization. And this signed disbursement authorization, like I said, it tells the title company that it's, we as the brokerage agree to let the title company cut your portion of the check directly to you. So we're just telling them it's okay. You don't have to send us that full check. You can send the agent directly their portion of the check. You can cut the checks for us. So that's what that disbursement authorization set, uh, tells title. And it's important that once you receive that signed DA to send it to title. And then the final piece is you make it to closing. It's the best day ever. And <laughs> that's when you get your check at the closing table. So because we were able to send that disbursement in, you can get paid, you get your check that day. Um, as soon as you get back from closing or the next day that you're in the office, we ask that you upload your closing documents. So it's part of what we need for that fully approved file for compliance is we need your final settlement statement. We need a final copy of what that MLS page looks like. And then we need copies of the checks that title cut. So all of that stuff you can upload after closing. If you're headed back to the office, you can do it as, as soon as you want. Um, as soon as possible is always preferred. Uh, and it, you don't have, once you close, you don't have to run to the office and do it. So we give you a little grace. And as soon as the next time you're in the office would be fantastic. If it's at the end of the month, um, we do need those as soon as possible because what we do at the end of every month is we close out all of the files for the entire month. And what that does is it makes sure that everyone who had a listing or a buyer in that month, that everything actually closed and that it closed for the same amounts. And that allows us to have accurate data when we calculate awards uh, and when we keep our files, we know exactly when they closed. So that's why it's important to upload those closing documents so that we can make sure to close out the file by the end of the month. Um, and then what you're going to do after that is you'll receive your check at the closing table and you'll also receive a check for Keller Williams. So as you all know, company dollar is something that you pay into the market center. 
once you reach that company dollar, you're capped and you don't owe anything for the rest of your cap year. Um, until you're to that point though, you're going to have a second check for Keller Williams. Um, we love it when you're able to bring that into the office. I have a little mailbox at both offices um, where you can drop checks. At uh, Park Meadows, it's over by your mailboxes. And at Highlands Ranch, it's right outside of my office. It's a red box. So both market centers, there's a place you can drop that check. So if you're able to bring into the office, that's great. If for some reason you're not at closing, so you're on vacation that week, or for some reason you're just not at closing, you can have those checks mailed. I just ask if you're going to have a check mailed that it's within the first two weeks of the month. So if it's the second half of the month, um, it's highly preferred that you bring the check to the office because, again, we need to close everything out by the end of the month. And if we're trying to track down checks, it can delay that process. Um, and please know that mailing it is an option if you need that, or if you know you're not going to be coming to the office, you can have the title company mail it. Um, and the final step, like I said, is you'll get paid at the table, which is great. Uh, there are some unique situations where you won't get paid at the table. And a few of those are uh, new builds. So sometimes the, the new builders they don't allow disbursement authorizations. So they actually will only write the check to the brokerage. And if that happens, you'll receive a check at the closing table for the full amount of the commission. And you'll bring that to the office and I will actually cut that check for you. So that's a situation in which you'll have to wait for us to cut the check for you. We do it as quickly as we possibly can. So as soon as I see that the check is there, I cut them. Um, and then Donna signs them as soon as she's able. And just know there's a little bit of a turnaround time for that. Um, the other instance in which the entire check will be to the market center and we'll have to cut a check to you is in case of a referral. So if you receive a referral from another agent, again, just like with any other transaction, they're actually required by law to write that full check to the market center. And then we create a DA and we cut the check back to you for a referral. Um, the other instance would be if by chance a DA was turned in late or we weren't able to get you the disbursement before closing, which is extremely rare. There are some cases if you turn that DA in on the morning of closing, um, it may be delayed a little bit. And what can happen is the title will, in that case, write the check for the full amount and I will cut the check directly to you. Do you all have questions about any of those items? I'm curious, do I have a mailbox? Because I haven't checked it. And if I don't check my PO box every couple of days, it's filled up with stuff. Am I supposed to be checking a mailbox? I don't know about that part yet. You do have a mailbox. Yep. Each market center has a mailbox for the agent. So um, if you go kind of behind the front desk and you kind of loop around right by the kitchen, Okay. At Park Meadows, that's that's where it is. the the mailboxes are. Does it get filled up as fast as my email box does? I highly doubt that. Okay. <laughs> if you just get as many emails as I do, no way. <laughs> okay, just ma just making sure. Yeah, the market center doesn't doesn't put a ton in there. Um, if there's a check or something, we'll give you a call. So, for example, say you receive a referral check and you completely forgot that you had sent out a referral. What we'll typically do is give you a call and ask if you want us to put it in your mailbox at the office or if you want to actually have us mail it to your house. So you have that option and usually we'll give you a call. So there shouldn't be too many mystery items in there. Um, sometimes we'll get mailers from um, the board or you could get a letter or something about your license or something like that, but you won't get a ton in there. So okay. sorry, sorry to distract the point of this. No, it's great. These are great questions. Feel free to ask them. That's what we're here for. So that is the full process. And I will, again, I will walk you through in command. Um, the other thing I will note is once you, this is actually an older version of this graphic. It looks like once you submit a commission request, you, are going to receive an email with a preliminary version of that disbursement so that you can actually take a look at it and let me know if everything looks good 
You'll have a chance to check and make sure that the commission amount is what you wanted. You'll have a chance to take a look and make sure that if you're paying a transaction coordinator, that that's on there. If you had forgotten when submitting the commission request that there was an outside referral to another agent, you'll have the chance to say, oh, this, I forgot to tell you, but this is an update that I need made. So after you submit this commission request, you will receive a preliminary version prior to when your file is actually fully approved. So you'll have a chance to take a look at it before closing for sure. All right, so any other questions about the process? All right, perfect. Well, let's go into command and I'll show you how to create an opportunity and get this going. All righty. And if you're on a computer, feel free to follow along if you want. Um, it's completely up to you all. And if you still have questions after today, uh, we can definitely do a one on one on this as well. If you're if you're struggling with it, I'm more than happy to do that with you all. So, OK. So this is your command portal. Likely your homepage will look similar to this. You'll have tasks, you'll have design updates over here. Um, you'll have your goals. When I was mentioning creating that opportunity early on so that you can track your numbers, this is why. It's because to track your appointment numbers, you need to have an appointment date and an opportunity. So the reason it's important to track those goals or to put those dates in the opportunities is to be able to track your goals. Tells you the health of your database, a lot of great stuff in here. So what we're focusing on today is opportunities. But to, in order to create an opportunity, we need to do one thing first and that's create a contact. So to with your opportunities, which means with any transaction that you have, they're gonna be connected to one of your clients, right? What command does is it connects that opportunity, that sale with your contact. So before even creating an opportunity, it's important to create that contact and command first. So once you, this applet right here, the second one down, this is your contacts applet. All of the contacts are gonna be listed here. My computer's loading really slow. So they're all gonna be listed here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click add a contact. Oops. And then you're going to put in their name. And the name is the bare minimum that you need to create an opportunity. So if that's all you want to do, that's great. Highly, highly, highly recommend adding in their email and their phone number, how you met them in the lead source. And then you can also tag them with different things like buyer, seller, that sort of thing. All of, all of this information is gonna help you grow your database. For example, if they're a buyer looking for a house and they don't find one and you guys part ways, if you have their email and your phone number, you can reach out to them in the future and they may buy with you again two years down the road. So highly recommend adding this information Although all you need to create an opportunity is actually just the full name. So we're gonna do testing contact. We'll pretend we put their email and phone number in there and I'm gonna click create. So once we add our buyers and sellers in there, now we can create an opportunity. So opportunity is, which one is it? It's the one with the little hands holding each other on the left-hand side. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click that. going to load. Okay, so this homepage here, this opportunities homepage is going to show at a glance all of your opportunities. So all of the buyers and sellers that you have, it splits them out here. Um, it shows which stage they're in. So cultivate, that's people that you're chatting with, you haven't yet set the appointment yet, but you're working on it. Appointment, those are the people that you've set the appointment, you're ready to do that listing or buyer presentation for them. Active means they're actively looking as a buyer or you have their house on the market as a seller. Under contract means you 
as the buyer have offered on the home or as the seller, you've received an offer on the home and accepted it. So that's when you're in that under contract phase. And then closed means you've, you've closed it out. So at a glance, uh, these are your listings and buyers. You also have uh, an area down here for leases. So what we're gonna do as the start of getting paid, so this is what we need to do to create this commission request here, is we need to create opportunity. And um, as a member of one market center, it should automatically show up. If, if you're a part of two market centers, so if you live in a different state or if you transferred in from another KW, you may have two market centers, in which case just make sure to select the market center that you are submitting the commission request for. So the market center that you're currently with. Um, the opportunity type is in most cases going to be listing or buyer. So listing, if it's, if it's a listing, you're gonna select that. If you're helping someone buy a house, you're gonna select buyer. Um, you're gonna be the owner. And then this is why it's important to create that, that uh, contact first is you're gonna connect the client to your opportunity. So I'm gonna search for that client that we already created and there they are, they're gonna pop up and we select it. Here you have the opportunity to select a co-buyer. So uh, when it's husband and wife teams or just simply two people buying a house together, you're gonna wanna add them in as separate clients in your database and you're gonna wanna put them both in that opportunity. So we all know sometimes, say it is a husband and wife that are looking for a house. Um, the wife may pick up the phone one day, the husband may pick it up the next day. So we wanna make sure that they're in there separately, that they're both getting your communications and your marketing. Um, so that's why there's a separate spot for both of those clients. Your opportunity name. So when it's a buyer, I would recommend naming it of the name of buyer. So testing contact is our name, is the name of our client. And then just do a little dash and have it labeled as a buyer. Once you find a house, what I would recommend doing is changing this to the property address. So once they actually have an offer in on a house and it's accepted, you could put the address and then you have their name and then that they're a buyer. Um, the opportunity name actually helps the market center search for your opportunity. So if you're needing help with an opportunity or you have a compliance question, um, the easiest way for us to search is usually, by the, is usually by the address. So that's why it's awesome when you're able to get the address and the opportunity name. If this was a listing, I would put the address in there right off the bat because you know what the address is from the beginning. You can add custom tags to your opportunities. So for example, if it's a referral, you could do a referral tag. You have to set these up on your own in settings. It's one of the more advanced features of command. Um, however, it's, it's a super helpful way if you're working um, with a lot of different buyers, you could tag them as the areas that they're looking. Um, there are a lot of fun things you can do with custom tags. Um, the estimated close date, you don't have to put that in there. What the estimated close date does is it helps you with this probable income here. Um, so if you have the date in this month, it'll help you with your probable income for this month. If you have the date next month, it'll show up as probable income next month. Um, so that's not necessary. And the more information you put in there, the more um, informed you'll be about your clients. Time frame, you can select that if you want. If it's a buyer, you can predict if they're six months out, 12 months out, if you think they're gonna buy this month, you can select that. Um, commission rate. So when you're creating an opportunity, if you're creating it early on, which is what I recommend doing, you're not gonna know yet what the commission rate is. So what I would do is I would put in what an average commission rate is. What doing this at this point does is again, it helps you with this potential income and this probable income. So. You can choose to do three. I know a lot of agents are not doing 2.7, 2.8. Um, you can do whatever you want there, but I would recommend doing somewhere between 2.7 to 
Um, that's typically what buyer agents are getting these days. Um, and then the opportunity phase. So this is gonna depend on where you're at in the process. If you are creating this opportunity early on, you haven't even set an appointment with them yet, then you're gonna do cultivate. And then the opportunity stage is again, oops, I pressed save. Sorry about that guys. <laughs> and then you press save and you'll make it to this screen. Does anyone have questions so far on creating this opportunity? All right, well, I'm just gonna keep moving along then. So once you press save, you'll be taken to this screen here. This is your opportunity. You can see the name of the opportunity is up here. You can see the contact that's associated with the opportunity is right there. And then here on this main screen, we can see the details. Right here is an opportunity ID. Um, typically we don't need this. And um, if for some reason you've named this something different and we can't find it, or there are technical difficulties and we ask you for the opportunity ID, this is where you find it. Everyone has their own opportunity ID. It's gonna start with the market center number. So it'll either look 037 or 089. And then the rest is just a unique ID for this specific opportunity. Um, when we talked about getting the dates in command, this is the area where you're going to add them. So if you want to track your numbers really well, you're going to add those dates into general information. They clicked the wrong one. I think I did. Let me move Zoom for a second. Actually, to put the data in, we need to drag it to a new, um, oh, there we go. Okay, so we have our market center, custom tags. These are some things we already put in. This is where we can put those dates in. So if you scheduled the appointment on September 1st, you could put that. Say you went to the appointment and you got the contract signed, you could put that date in. Um, Say the agreement was one, the date of the appointment, you could put that date in. These dates, again, they're important for tracking your numbers. On that first page of command and in the goals applet, there's gonna be a section that shows you how many appointments and how many appointments you won. And the only way for command to track that is for you to put those dates in here. So uh, that's why I recommend creating these opportunities early on because it really helps you track your numbers. You can see the commission rate we put in there. If you wanna put in their budget, you can do that here. 400,000, 4 million would be an awesome budget. All right, we're gonna click save. Um, if this is a listing, you can put in the property right here. If you're under contract with the buyer, you would just put the address of the house they're purchasing in here. Uh, buyer profile, so this has, has to do with the app. So if you're using the app, there are some awesome ways that you can communicate with your clients through command and through command opportunities. Um, in order to do that, you need to have the app downloaded and, and set up. Um, so that's an awesome thing. There's a Kelly guide that walks you through setting up the app. And once you're all set up, it's really great. When you're going through this process with your buyer or seller, the post-close process, you can communicate with them. You can check off a task you can say, we got this agreement signed and they can be automatically notified. So there are a lot of really cool things we can do there. Documents, so when it comes to getting paid, this is the big one right here. It's creating the opportunity and then it's uploading your documents. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the checklist type. So for a lot of you, you're gonna be selling residential real estate. So you're gonna click residential. And then this is, this is the beauty here. So this is what tells you what's required, what you have to upload in order to get a fully compliant file. So there are three stages right here, consultation. So that's between the point you got the buyer agreement signed and you're probably looking at homes. There's under contract. That's when the purchase agreement has been signed and then closed, <clears throat> excuse me. Closed is when you've, you've closed the property. You made it to title and everything is good and you have your check and everyone's happy. 
So consultation, the two required documents are right here. What you do is you can either drag and drop or you can browse files and select it from your computer. So if you're using CTME, you're gonna wanna download those files as a PDF and then upload them individually here. If you are using DocuSign, there is a way that you can integrate that. Um, I'm not gonna go over that today. I'm not familiar with it. Um, and that's something that you can eventually do if you're using DocuSign. However, a lot of agents here use so then you would just download those and re-upload them. So, alrighty. So we have the exclusive right to buy and the buyer advisory. Where do I find that buyer advisory? Is that that's not a CTME document? Uh, that'd be a question for Donna. I I was under the impression all your documents were available to you in CTME. Well, maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. I haven't, I've only gone in and looked at the buyer exclusive right to buy so far. So. Yeah, it should. I mean, these required documents should be in your CTME. So the buyer advisory is the one that you have them sign even before you're working with them so that they know, um, they know that you're an agent essentially. So that should be, if, if you can't find it, um, chat with Donna, because those those should be in your CTM or your DocuSign. And I found CTM through RE Colorado, but I was informed that there's a more direct route. Does anybody else use it through RE Colorado? Or do you go, do you guys normally directly, do you have a direct link to CTM or do you use it through your RE Colorado account? Because when my dashboard shows up, on RE Colorado, one of the tabs, one of the little icons there is for CTME, and that's how I got in there. But then Britt told me later, she's like, oh, I just have a tab open on my computer for it, so. I would actually say I prefer it that way too. Like I like to have my RE Colorado tab and my CTME contracts tab. So you can just go to CTME.com, I think. Gosh, I don't even know, I'd have to take a look and then you'll um, save your username and password. So you can just have those tabs up and easily go to each of them instead of funneling through RE Colorado. Got it, all right. All yeah. right. Thank you, thank great you. Great question. Yeah, you're asking great questions. I love it, keep them coming. Um, so this is the consultation section. For compliance, each section individually will have to be submitted to the market center. So you don't, you don't just submit them all as one, you submit consultation separately from under contract. So that's really important to know because compliance is gonna approve both of these separately. So this is gonna show up when you have documents actually uploaded, this is gonna show up as green and you're gonna be able to submit it to the market center. When that happens, you're gonna see, a, it's right here. Can you guys see my mouse moving? Should be able to. Um, you'll be able to see when it says submitted and then when it's approved, it's going to be green and it'll say approved and very clearly, I will be able to see that it's been approved. Um, under contract, same thing. Oops, I think I clicked on it. There we go. Under contract, same thing. All of the documents that are required are going to be in red. The conditional documents are the ones that if it's a certain situation, you'll need them. For example, if it's a townhome with an HOA, you're going to need to upload the HOA documents. More required documents. The, the only one when you're submitting this for approval, the only required document that you don't need to upload is the disbursement authorization, because this is actually what I give you. So when you're looking to get the file approved, don't worry about this one, because that's something that you're going to be given. Does that make sense? You don't need to worry about, it says required, but you're not gonna need to upload that until I give you the signed one and then you can go in and upload it. All right, so more documents down here. Basically all these conditionals leave a space for any possible situation where you could have an additional document. If you need to, you can add your own line for add a document. However, you almost never need to do that on your own. We've listed a lot of different scenarios in here and you should be just fine with the, with the lines that we have. And then closed. 
So once you're through that closing, this is where you upload your closing documents. This is where you upload that copy of the MLS that shows that it's closed in the MLS. If it's an off market sale, then you wouldn't have one and that's okay. Um, and then when at all possible, please upload copies of the closing docs. Um, that helps, helps me confirm that everything is correct, that you received the commission that you were entitled. And if there's ever some type of discrepancy, it allows me to look at those checks online before they actually make it to my mailbox in person. So this is super helpful if you're able to upload these copies after the closing. All right, does anyone have any questions about submit, uploading files or submitting them for approval? I'm sure I'll have them as they come into real life, but this is a great crash course. Thank you very much. Yeah, yep, and if questions come up, um, feel free to email me anytime or give me a call. I'm more than happy to answer them. So once you upload your documents, the next step here, and remember, please upload these you want to upload them several days before closing at the latest if you don't want to be doing this on closing day because what happens when you upload your documents then our compliance officer is going to have to take a look at them and approve them and then i have my next steps for the commissions so if you upload these on the day of closing you won't get your disbursement in time because too many people need to take a look at the file so please, at the very latest, make sure you have these approved three days before closing. Um, like I said, I would recommend uploading these as you go. So as you're getting the documents and getting them signed, upload the documents as you go, and then it'll make it much simpler as you get closer to closing time. All right, so once you have that done, the next step is the offers and commissions tab. So this is the big one. This is how you tell me that it's time for you to get paid. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna navigate over to this tab. And again, we are still within this opportunity. So this all happens from that opportunity that you create. We're gonna click add new offer. And we're just gonna, you can call it whatever you want, initial offer, if it's the final offer, you can do that. The reason why they have offers in there separately. So if you're working with a buyer who's offered on multiple properties, you could have different offers in there. If you are working with a seller and you've received multiple offers on a property, you can actually use command as a way to track all of those offers. So if you received 15 and you, you need to take a look at all the differences of them, command is a way that you can do that. You can also do that in a spreadsheet. You can do that, you can write it down, but command is a way that allows you to track the offer. Um, the only offer that the market center is concerned about is the one that you're gonna get paid on. So the, the offer that is the final offer, you've made it through inspection, you know it's gonna go to the closing table, that's the offer that's required for you to do. The other ones are not required. You don't have to do offers for every single offer only the one that's actually accepted and made it through. So we have our final offer here. This is the one that's been accepted. We know that we're gonna be paid on commission for it. Um, we wanna put in that the date the offer was made and then what the closing date was in. So now that you've actually made an offer on a property, you know what the closing date is because it's actually in the contract. So you're gonna pick the closing date and then you can search for the address here. If it's a listing, you can also select it from KWLS. So KWLS is how listings are tracked in the KW world. And when you put a listing in KWLS, it also syndicates out to a ton of other websites. Um, the thing about KWLS as well is once you put your listing in the MLS, it should sync to KWLS. It doesn't always, but it should. So if you have a listing, it should show up here and then you can search for it. So pretend we search, we're searching for it here and this is our listing. So we're gonna select it. The next step after you put in the property address is parties. 
you're gonna, you need to put in the buyer name. So that's already there because remember we connected that buyer to the opportunity in, in one of the very first steps. And then you're gonna put the seller's name in there. You're gonna look at the purchase agreement. You're gonna put the seller's name in there. Seller's name. The rest of that information is not required. Again, you can track that information. So tracking the other agents on the deal, putting their emails and phone numbers in there can be super helpful because you can reach out to them in the future um, and potentially put them in your downline or refer business to and from them in the future. So again, bare minimum is gonna be to put your name and email in there. And then the other agent on the other side of the transaction. So in this case, it's the seller's agent. And then it's optional to put in their, their email and phone number. If you have it, I would recommend doing it just because again, it's information that you have for later. So the only required ones here to recap are the buyer and seller's name, your name, and then the agent on the other side of the deal. And all of this information is gonna go into that disbursement authorization that I give you. Um, right here, you're gonna have terms. So however much, I think we did it a $400,000 house, we're gonna do $200,000 in cash, and then they're gonna finance $200,000. So the sales price is 400,000 there. You can put earnest money in there if you want, you don't have to. Um, but earnest money, if you're putting it there, just know that like this amount, the cash plus finance amount is makes the sales price. So it's not earnest plus cash plus finance in this. If you have earnest money, it's gonna be part of this. So just make sure that you include that earnest money amount in the cash amount. All right, agent analysis. Again, this is for if you if you put multiple offers in here because you wanted to compare them, that's when you would use this section for the disbursement authorization to get paid. You don't need to do this. So we're gonna click save. And now we have, this is the offer we just created. We are gonna click accept. The only time again that you would click reject is if you have multiple offers that you've put in there. So one thing I wanna note, now you can see that a couple of things have happened. We now have this new manage commission button and we have this word open here. So when this says open, it means it has not yet been submitted to the market center. So there are two steps in creating a commission request. The first step is creating that offer and the next step is managing the commission. So what, some, what sometimes happens and it's completely understandable is people, create the offer, but they forget to actually manage the commission and submit that request. And when it's in this state, when it's in this open state, I don't see it. It's, I don't get notified that there's a request. So if you have only gotten this far, you're not gonna have a disbursement email to you. So it's super important to remember that this process is two parts. It's the create an offer and it's manage commission. So now that we've created our offer, we're gonna go in and we're gonna click manage commission. And then it's going to pop up here. All the information that we put into the offer is gonna be pulled into here. So we're gonna click edit general information because you can see there's one thing that we didn't add to the previous part that we need to add. We're gonna put the contract date. So say we sign the contract, on October 1st. That's the date of the purchase agreement contract. It's not the date of your buyer agreement. It's the date of the purchase agreement, the date that a buyer and seller chose to go under contract together. So that's what the contract date is. All of this information we created in the offer was pulled in. If you need to edit anything, you can. So say we're actually getting 3% commission then it updates to 12,000 for our commission. If the purchase price is now 405,000, we can make that change there. Again, you're making these changes in the original request. If we, you've already done this and you've received a preliminary DA, any changes like that, you'll just email me. So you don't have to go in here. You actually won't be able to go in here and change it once you've submitted it. So we're gonna click save changes. We can see that it's pulled in us as the agent, 
It says the date of closing. It shows the breakdown we have at the market center. So it shows that we have our 70-30 split here. It shows that 6% goes to uh, KWRI. It shows what your check is going to be. You can definitely edit that if you need to edit that here. You can also add another agent. So if you're working with another agent on a deal, you can add that. If you are in productivity coaching, we add productivity coaching on our end. So you don't have to worry about anything regarding to productivity coaching or, or paying a coach um, because we add that in. So there is something on my end that's gonna tell me that you're in productivity coaching. If you are working with a TC, I love it when you click add note or when they click add note and say email TC and then the TC's email because I don't always know that who your TC is. So sometimes TCs aren't added to the DA, sometimes they are, but if you are having trouble with creating the commission request or something's not going right or the numbers don't look right, you can always write a note to me, I will see it. And then when you submit it, I'll see that you wrote a note and have a question. So feel free to use this notes feature. I do, I am able to see those notes. Um, the other thing I will say is if you are working with a TC, something like that is gonna be considered a deduction. Um, so you, to, to add a transaction coordinator, you're gonna add item, it's a deduction. And then you're gonna say TC, I'm paying my TC $400, pay to um, Kate Yan, that's me. And then you're gonna to wanna to put in their address and their phone number. So five, 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 five. five. Um, putting their email in there is helpful and it's not required. So then you're gonna click add. That's if you're working with a TC. You can also choose to donate to KW Cares. So you can, KW Cares, KW Kids Can, you can choose to make those donations here. Say you wanna donate $5 of your transaction to KW Kids Can. You wanna donate $5 for a bold scholarship. You can do that there, save changes. So that's how you can manipulate the payment section. Again, if you are having trouble doing it or you need to do something, but you're not quite sure how to do it, um, just write it in the notes section because I can make those updates on my end. And then you're gonna click submit. That's very important is clicking that submit button because I do not see that in, unless you do it. I don't see your commission request. Um, it's yelling at me for some reason, probably because I remaining agent balance. Okay, so when I made those changes, I think that messed it up. Five, five, four, six, fifty. Company commission. Oh, if you ever get that, um, if you ever get that, it's yelling at you like that, you may need to recalculate the commission. So you just click that button, save changes. And now we click submit again. So then it's submitted to me. It's off. And now you can see the the blue submitted here, you can see, and I realize it's 1201, I'm gonna wrap this up really quickly. Um, if you can stay great, if you have to hop off, um, please email me if you have questions at mca at kwexecutives.com. Um, so back to the commissions tab, you'll be able to see that the DA has been submitted. So for some reason you think you submitted a DA request and you can't find it, um, just go to the commissions tab and take a look and see if it's in the submitted stage. Um, so when it's in this stage, I is when I calculate it and send it off to you. So after you click submit, um, if you submitted it in the afternoon, the next morning, you will receive that preliminary DA um, that you can take a look at and you'll receive it by email. Um, and then if it's if the closing is really far out, like it's a month away, you may not receive it that next morning, um, but you'll receive it very soon. So request termination. This button is only if the contract is terminated. So if the buyer and seller decided they're not gonna do this anymore, you've terminated the contract, 
that is the only time that you need to request termination of a DA request. If it's a, as you can see, you, you no longer have the ability to add things, change things. So if it's just a change, don't click request termination and submit a new request. All you need to do is email me at mca at kwexecutives.com or with Park Meadows, it's klrw89 at kwexecutives.com. Um, and I will make that change for you and send you an updated DA. Um, so this again is only for if you actually terminated the contract, you're no longer going to the closing table. Um, and the other thing, before I do that, what, what questions do you all have about requesting a termination request, timeline, anything like that? This is okay. just a good, good intro to it all, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So the one thing I wanted to do, um, let me stop sharing for just a second. I wanna show you an example of what a DA would look like. And just right. walk you through that. If you if you can and want to stay on, great. Again, if you have to hop off, I totally get it. Um, all right, I'm just going to show you an example. My email is loading right now. <laughs> all righty. Do any of you have closings coming up? that you need to submit commission request for? Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a buyer chomping at the bit to, to get her MLS access. She's like living on Zillow right now. And I keep saying Zillow is not the right place for you to be looking. I mean, you can gauge things, but I don't know. This has been great because it's the first look I've had in command. I haven't even tried to log into command yet, so. Yeah, command can do some really great things. My advice to you, if you're new to command, it's to really, it's understanding this, right? Because if you want to get paid, um, the other thing is just start uploading, just start adding contacts to command because your database is the most important thing and command can do so many things. And most of them rely on you having your contacts in a database. So I'm going to share my screen with you again. Okay. So right here, you can see, this is what a disbursement's gonna look like. So you're gonna see the market center up here. You're going to see the DA number up here, the address. And this information is all coming from that commission request that you sent to me. So that's why it's very important to make sure that the address is correct. It's, you're gonna wanna make sure that the seller and the buyer information is correct that the closing date, that's a big one to make sure the closing date's correct and that the sales price and commission are correct because I don't cross check all those little details. So I rely on you to put in that information and to put it in correctly. So that's all pulled in from command from everything you just did. Um, and then right here, it basically explains that we as the market center T are telling the title company that it's okay to disperse the commis commissions as such. Otherwise, they would have to cut the entire check to us if it weren't for this. So, so this person- In yeah, this so example, in this example, I'm assuming that this person is already capped because you're getting nothing, or the office is getting nothing and it's all going to the agent. Yes, correct. So this person is capped. They don't owe anything to Keller Williams. Um, they get the entire- entire closing check goes to them. So um, in this scenario, how does corporate get their 6% or does that go away once you cap also? So you, you cap on that as well. So okay. one, they get sit, take 6% up to $3,000 within your cap year. So this person has capped on both company dollar and royalty. Royalty is what we call that $3,000 that goes to international. Okay. So um, most of you will have the same cap date for both, um, but if, for example, you're capped on company dollar, but not on royalty, you'll see that amount for royalty show up here, because okay. um, it'll be a check to us, and then we send that money to Keller Williams International. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I thought someone said something. So if we scroll down, this shows the breakdown of the commissions. So 
it shows that you get the full unit. So if it's multiple agents on a deal, the unit may be split up 50-50 or 70-30. However, it shows how much commission we have here. It'll show you the split. So the 70% associate split and the 100% royalty split, and it'll show what the commission is down here. So you'll be able to see how much is going to Keller Williams. It's the breakdown is all on this second page. And then it shows you how much uh, volume you get for the deal. So this deal, it's a, um, the price is 505,000. Um, so that's the credit you're gonna get for awards and everything like that. Volume is the amount of money of real estate that you've sold. And then adjusted volume. So what Keller Williams does for that is they take every single transaction and they calculate what it would be like if it was a 3% commission. So if, if you have more than a 3% commission, your adjusted volume is gonna go down because they just wanna even the playing field for awards. That's what that is right there. So you'll receive an unsigned version like this after you submit that commission request. You will receive a signed version like this when that file is fully approved. This uh, preliminary version is emailed to you and then the fully approved version is uploaded to command. And then you'll go to command, download it and send it off to title. And then you'll get paid at the table. Awesome. What questions do you all have? I know that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's good for me to get some insights that are a little further ahead than I am in the process, so. And if you're going through the process, so if you're under contract with someone and you don't um, don't know what step to take next, just reach out and we'll help you through it. Um, and then eventually either a TC will do it for you, a transaction coordinator, or it'll just become old hat. So the main things are make sure to create that contact and command, create that opportunity, and then submit that offer and finally submit that commission request. Um, and just make sure all your all your files are in there and compliant so and we'll help guide you along as well Excellent. cool well thanks for your time today i appreciate you absolutely thank you all so much and again if you have questions um my email at uh, highlands ranch is mca at kwexecutives.com email at park meadows is klrw89 at kw.com um you can reach me at both emails as well. So feel free to email me if you have questions um, after today. All right. All right, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.